Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and today we're taking a look at the new Chanel LeBlanc collection for 2023. Now this collection did launch in other countries, you know, a while back now. So it was delayed here in the US. I had originally pre-ordered everything a while back and then I was going to change my order because of that delay. But when I saw everything again, I ended up just sticking with my original purchasing plan. So I did pick up everything. We're just moving straight into swatches while I talk about the collection a little bit. But this is the quad in 68 Delice. And you can see we've got four pastel shades here. There is a la lavender here. This is gonna be a pink based lavender. And then we have a nice warm peach. And we have kind of this, you know, it's a little bit of a maroonish brown, but it's very, very soft. And then we have this shimmery lemon yellow. So overall, I think it's a really pretty quad. Everything in the LeBlanc collection is typically going to be very light. So just keep that in mind. And I have the look that I have on today. I've got eye swatches I'll share with you. And then Valentina, who is one of the new creative directors of Chanel, their work is not actually coming out until 2024, but she did create a promotional look for Chanel using these items. And I tried to replicate that. So I'll include that at the very end of the video if you're interested, but I, I love that look. So in addition, I would have to say that the star of the show is this highlighting blush. This is the illuminating blush from Chanel. And there's actually a little uh, brush that comes with this as well. So you can see it's really beautiful. As you can kind of see, it wore away on my eyeshadow palette already, but you can see we've got kind of this tweed embossing on the blush and the shadows. You can see the sheen in this illuminating blush. So it's Actually, you know, it's got a mix of cool and warm pink in here. You can see it's kind of swirled. And then you have kind of this champagne shimmer. But when you put it all together, it's a little warm. So I think it's a really beautiful shade. It is going to be fairly light. And I do have demos where I tried to build it up a little bit with the Sonia G Smooth Buffer as well as put it on lightly so you can kind of see a little bit of the difference. Moving on to the Balm Essentiels to say I... You know, I really, I, I like these colors. <laughs> so this one here is Drag A. And let's just put it on my hand. So you can see this is gonna be your warm pink. The Balm Essentiels are essentially highlighting sticks. They can stay a little bit, a little wet on the skin unless you really tap it out there. So this will be a warm pink. And then we have Lila's, which is going to be a cooler lavender. Honestly, this, you know, you can see there's not a ton of pigment. This one is going to be a little bit more, it's, it's a little less pigmented. So in certain lighting, you won't really see that lavender. When the light hits it a certain way, you'll get a hint of it, which I think makes it very wearable. And one of the things that I've been doing with these is putting them on top of the lipsticks and it gives it just like a little special glint. So I actually have the Lilas on in the center and drag a around the edges right now. And I love them that way. And then we also have two of the Chanel Rouge Coco Bombs. And first up, we have number 928 Pink Delight. We're going to put these on my other hand here so we can leave space for comparisons. And you can see that this one here is going to be a soft peachy shade. It's not overly warm though. Um, I think it, it, it is a warm peach, but it's still closer to that neutral spectrum. So there's a little bit of pink in there as well. I think it's a really pretty shade. And then we have 930 Sweet Treat. Let's put that one on this side. And you can see this one has a bit more red in there. There's a little bit of a maroonish burgundy kind of shade there, very soft. And if you compare that there, you can see that the actual eyeshadow shade is gonna be much more brown in comparison, but they really go well together. And then we have two new Rouge Allure inks. And this one here is 236 Gourmandise. I have to say, I think these are kind of hard to get. You know, surprisingly, um, I, I don't know if they have less stock of these or if these are just really popular, but I know that already, like these were something that like sold out during pre-order at the Aventura Boutique. And then we have 238 Tentacion and can see that uh, this first one, Gourmandise, is gonna be kind of like a 
like a medium rose with a bit of red in there and Tentacion is going to be a red with, there is going to be a cooler base to it, but it's neutral leaning cool. So that cooler base, if you want it to seem more cool, you want to kind of blend out or buff out that color. But if you leave it piled up, you're not going to notice as much of the, the cool undertone. So let's start off with the eyeshadow quad and we're gonna look at some eye swatches and the demo of today's look. Again, I will have another eye look at the end of the video where I you know, attempt to recreate Valentina's look. And I have to say this eyeshadow quad, I think is a nice quad. The embossing, don't buy it for the embossing because I've used this a few times and already, you know, all of the embossing is gone. And I have to say, I think it's a really nice spring-like palette. It's not gonna be for everybody. I think it is nice to have, but I don't think that this is a must have personally. Now, if you have a warmer skin tone, I think that this purple shade, this lavender shade looks really gorgeous around the eyes. So if you wanna like line your eyes with this on the lower lash line, which I did in that last you know imitation look, but if you do have cooler undertones, I think the pink base of that lavender does give a little bit of that reddish eye look to it. So I think it's going to be better directly adjacent to the eyes for people with warmer undertones. So just something to note there. The peach, I think, is just a really nice, useful, soft peach. You know, it's it's just, it's a nice shade, okay? And so that's gonna be matte. It's not a, a flat matte. You can see there is gonna be a little bit of a sheen. The lavender definitely has a sheen. It has a little bit more sheen than the peach. And then we also have a bit of a sheen on the third shade here, this brownish shade with a touch of maroon. That's really gonna be more of a soft satin. And then the lemony yellow is going to be a shimmery shade and you can actually feel a little bit, like if you're touching it with your finger, you can feel a little bit more of the texture of that. So it's definitely going to be a little bit more sparkly. It is a micro glitter kind of shade. And you can see in the eye swatches, I showed you the difference between brush and finger application if you wanna build that up. And of course we do come with little utensils in here from Chanel. There is a foam tip applicator and a little brush. I think this is a really nice eyeshadow palette and it's very refreshing to see a color story like this from Chanel. You know, we've been seeing a lot of the kind of repetitive, warm, rosy, you know, red eyeshadow palettes from them. And it's nice to see something a little bit different. Now in line with all of the LeBlanc products, you know, these are going to be softly pigmented shadows. So this will be a lighter, softer color story, but I think it's a really nice accent. So is this palette a must have? You know, I think it's gonna depend on the person. For me personally, I don't think it's a must have palette, but it is really pretty. I would have to say my favorite shade in here, I thought it was gonna be the lavender, but it's actually a little more pink based than I would have preferred. I would have preferred a little bit more uh, blue in there. Uh, so it's actually the lemon yellow, which really surprised me, but I just love how that lemon yellow kind of pairs with everything. Is it a particularly unique shade or formula? It's not, but it is something a little different for me. So overall, I think it's a nice palette. Everything has performed well. I would not recommend buying it for the embossing because that wears away immediately. But overall, it's uh, you know, it, it's nice to see something like this from Chanel. So the palette itself has an 18 month shelf life. We have two grams of product in here and it is made in Italy. Let's go ahead and move on to the illuminating blush. So here's the illuminating blush from Chanel. I love having kind of those marbled pinks in there and a little bit of that champagne. The champagne has a soft golden glint, but it's really gonna be more of a neutral champagne. There is a little bit of silver in there as well. So it's pretty balanced. Uh, but overall, the pink, you know, with that overwhelmingly is going to be just a little bit more on the warm side, but it's still, very suitable for a variety of skin tones. I think it's a really beautiful shade. Now this is an illuminating blush, which means that it is going to have shimmer in there. So if you don't like shimmery blushes, this might not be for you. When you put this on with a fluffy brush, you're gonna get a very, very soft pink hue with some shimmer. You know, this would be suitable, you know, if you don't want like a lot of blush or maybe you're looking specifically for highlight, you know, you're doing kind of a minimal makeup look, you could use that 
all on its own. If you want to magnify that, definitely pair it with a Balm Essentiel and get a little bit more sheen from it. But I think it's a really pretty shade. If you buff this blush in with a buffing brush, such as Sonia G Smooth Buffer, then you're actually, I actually noticed that the pigmentation of the blush seems to increase a little bit. I see more of that pink. I see a little bit less of the glitter. So I do definitely see that shimmery shine, of course, that's not gonna go away. However, the way it buffs into the skin, you don't really notice so much of the glitter and it just seems a little bit more uniform. And that's actually my preference with this blush. So if you like shimmery blushes, I think that this is definitely one to consider. The texture of this is kind of more of a silky powder Powder. It definitely does not feel like firmly pressed. It's not quite the same as any of the blushes or highlighters in texture in the Chanel line, at least out of my collection. So I think, you know, it just, it feels kind of silky. I think it goes on beautifully either with a fluffy brush or a dense brush, depending on what you're looking for. But if you want to see more of that glitter, definitely go with a fluffier brush. And I have to say, I think overall, uh, it's gonna hold up really well. So, you know, I'm not talking about wear time on the cheeks. That is, you know, your typical powder blush, but I don't believe that this product is going to get hard pan or anything based off of touching it. It feels like, it reminds me more of previous formulas from Chanel, you know, like more like the older blushes and so forth, which we were happy with. <laughs> so I'm hoping that this will hold up really well uh, over a long period of time. So I do think that this is one worth considering if you like the shimmeriness of it. And we do have an 18 month shelf life on this. There's seven grams of product and it's made in Italy. Now, before we move on to the next product, this is the brush that comes with the uh, blush here and you know it's just kind of a, a nice br brush it's going to work well with this particular product and the brush comes set in a separate little pouch for it and i'm sorry the brush comes separately in a pouch and the blush comes separately in a pouch the eyeshadow palette also has one of these velour pouches Moving on, let's talk about the Balm Essentiel sticks. So again, we have two, we have kind of this warmer pink and this cooler tone lavender. And I think they are really nice. So if you're not familiar with the Balm Essentiel sticks, these are essentially your balmy, dewy highlighting sticks. So unless you really tap this out and use just a tiny bit of product, you will still have a little tackiness on your skin. It kind of gives you that wet look. So it's giving you a sheen, not really from glitter, but just from light reflection. You know, you've got the different refractive index of you know your, your skin versus this wetter product. And I have to say, I really like these. So I am not a huge fan of highlighting sticks typically. I'll use them occasionally, you know, on the cheekbones as highlighters, but a lot of times I prefer a powder highlight. So I wasn't really sure if I wanted these originally, but I had, I knew I had to get the purple. And then I saw these used on the lips and, you know, just kind of mixing them on top of you know your lip color to give it a little bit something extra and that's kind of my favorite way to use these so i have to say i really like them for that i do think that these work really nicely with the eyeshadow palette itself like they they coordinate very well and they work nicely with the fantasy de chanel blush so if you want to just dab a little bit above it you know i think that works out really well so today i'm actually using drag a above the blush and then in the last look that I have at the end of the video, I use the Lilas so you can kind of see a little bit of the difference. And if you are going to use it as a little bit of a highlight above the blush, it does kind of just help highlight some of the different shades in the blush. So the blush looks like a warmer pink on my cheeks when I use a drag A. And then when I cool it off using the Lilas instead, the blush itself, you notice a bit more of the sheen and a little bit more of the cooler notes in there. So it is another way to kind of emphasize more of what you're looking for on a particular day. So the Balm Essentiel sticks are eight grams of product. We have an 18 month shelf life and they are made in Italy. And I have to say, I really like both of these and I only have one other Balm Essentiel stick. I like these two better. So I'll compare, I have a few comparisons that we'll look to in just a minute. Let's talk a little bit about the Chanel Rouge Coco Bombs. And I have all of the bombs in the, in the permanent collection for these as well. 
And so we have two new limited edition shades in 928 Pink Delight and 930 Sweet Treat. These are made in France. They have an 18 month shelf life and we have three grams of product. So these do have a click closure and I have to say they are really nice. So these are going to be, you know, just a tinted lip balm. I think they are a nice product. I don't find them particularly, you know, like especially moisturizing, but they also don't dry out my lips and they have a very thin texture. It's a little bit waxier than oilier. And yeah, overall they're a nice basic tinted lip balm. And I really like both of these shades actually, but I do think that the Pink Delight shade is the one I'll probably use more frequently. And let's go ahead and take a look at the Rouge Allure inks. Now the Chanel Rouge Allure inks are a liquid matte lipstick. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite liquid lipstick formulas because they go on easily. They stay put fairly well and I just find them easy to apply. But also if you want to use just a little bit, you know, and soften that color, it's really easy to do that with this particular formula. They're not drying too fast that you're getting like streaks, but yet they're not drying so slowly that, you know, it's harder to layer. So overall, I have to say I like those. And the two new shades here, I think that they are a nice inclusion. However, I have to say the Tentacion, it's not a unique shade. There are a lot of reds in Chanel's line. And I feel like, you know, we've seen that shade or very similar shades to it, you know, repeatedly from a variety of brands. So it's not really a unique shade. The pink shade Gourmandise, that is gonna be kind of more of a warmer rose shade. Again, probably not super unique, but I don't have a shade like that in a liquid lipstick formula. So I do think it's really nice. And that's actually what I'm wearing in this video right now. I have a base of that. And then I have the um, Balm Essential sticks on top of that. So overall, I have to say, I, I do really like the Rouge Allure inks. They do come in a frosted glass tube, so they are gonna be a little bit heavy. And we have six milliliters of product. They're made in France with an 18 month shelf life. Now, original spring promo photos, you know, I would have to say this Chantakai spring palette looked very similar to the Chanel. In person, they don't look quite as similar, but let me go ahead and compare those. So the Chantakai, really the only thing that's gonna be more similar here is this yellow. You can see we have a similar yellow shade. Tones are pretty similar. The Chanel is actually slightly cooler whereas the Chantecai has just a little bit more gold in it. It's also gonna be a little bit more pigmented. And then we have a pink instead of the lavender. And then the other two shades are actually going to be browns. So we have kind of a taupe and more of a milk chocolate brown. And you can see, you know, obviously the peach here is very different, but this brown shade here from Chanel definitely has more red, some burgundy maroon kind of tones to it that are not present in the Chantecai. And then I just wanted to compare a few Surat shades as well because that peach shade here in the Chanel made me think of Poudre right away. However, looking at it now, I can see Poudre is gonna be lighter significantly lighter than the peach. So that's not really a match. Let's try Rosatra. See how that one compares. And we'll put that right there. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch those down here. So here's Rosatra. Here's the peach from the Chanel palette. I think they are fairly close. The Rosatra has obviously got more dusty rose in there, uh, so it's gonna be a little bit different, but they are, you know, kind of close enough. And then this is Ravissant from Surat. This is gonna be, let's go ahead and put that right there. Yeah, this is more blue-based. Definitely more blue-based. That's kind of what I was thinking it was gonna look like, honestly, in the Chanel palette. So I have to say I do like the, um, the Ravissant shade from Surat a little bit more. And then I want to take a look at this. This is Renard Rue. This is in comparison with the last shade from the Chanel, or the third shade from Chanel, that brown. Let's go ahead and swatch that side by side here. Um, you can see the Syrah is definitely gonna be more pigmented. It is kind of a similar tone though, but it's just much deeper. 
I actually don't have any other similar yellow eyeshadow shades because it's just, it's not a shade that I typically buy. Uh, but yeah, I have to say, I do really like the inclusion of it in here. So those are actually gonna be my best comparisons here uh, with this Chanel palette. And let's go ahead and move on to the Fantasy de Chanel blush. And I've got a few blush comparisons I wanna look at with this. First, we're looking at the Bobbi Brown in blushed pink. And here's the Fantasy de Chanel. So you can kind of see those together. I'm going to blend all of the shades for the Bobbi Brown together. So kind of see how that compares. And yeah, so the Bobbi Brown's gonna be a little bit cooler, but, and it doesn't have quite as much the Bobbi Brown sheen is more subtle on the skin than the Chanel. The Chanel, you can kind of see that glitter. With the Bobbi Brown, it's definitely a bit more subtle than the Chanel. So it gives you more of a sheen, not really so much of a glitter look. So just something to note there as a difference. But you can definitely see that the Bobbi Brown is going to be cooler in tone. This is Surratt's Barb a Papa. And this is definitely going to be cooler in tone as well, but it does have a bit of a shimmer. So I wanted to share that as well as an option. And this is going to be a cool pink. There's almost a touch of lavender in there, but not really. It's like, it's so cool though, that it almost makes you think that there's a little bit in there. And this is the Sisley Lorca Day in Rose. So this is number two. One of my favorites, I use this a lot during the summer. You can't tell, but I do. Um, and then here's that with Fantasy de Chanel. They're actually pretty close. Uh, yeah, you know, I would say that those are really close. The Sisley though is not gonna be a shimmery. You can see straight off that the Chanel has more shimmer than the Sisley. The Sisley is gonna be a lot more subtle and understated, but the actual pink color is pretty close. This is RMS in French Rosé. And let's go see how this one compares. This is a shimmery blush. It's gonna be a fairly intense shimmery blush. We'll put that right on top. You can see this is gonna be much more pigmented. It's not really glittery per se. I mean, there is some micro glitter in here, but when you put this one on the skin, you really just have kind of intense shine as well. You can see that the color though is not gonna be anywhere really close to the Chanel. And then I want to take a look at a couple of the Givenchy. These are the Prism Libra brushes, the, uh, blushes. This one here is number one, which I think it's, yep, Mousseline Lilas. And I'm gonna go ahead and re-swatch the Chanel. So let me just, swatching the loose powder blushes is always a little bit more challenging. So I'm gonna do two layers of product there. And just so you can see that a little better. You can see this is gonna be cool tone. It has a bit of a pink and a little touch of lavender in there. I have to say that is one of my favorite blushes. I really like that one a lot. And here's the Chanel. You can see it's gonna be significantly warmer. And then let's take a look at shade number two. This one is Taffeta's Rose, or Taffeta's Rose, I think it is, uh, from the Givenchy. And these Givenchy blushes, um, they don't have the shimmer and the sheen, but I did want to compare. So you can see this is definitely still more pink, uh, a little bit cooler in tone still than the Chanel. So yeah, I would say that the best match for the Chanel blush is the Sisley Lorca Day in 2 Rosé. So if you already have this, you might want to pass on the Chanel. However, if you want one versus the other, the Chanel is going to be uh, less expensive. However, you know, per gram, it's not, but are you gonna use 15? This is 15 grams of product. So, I mean, using that up is gonna take forever. So depends what you are looking for, but I think they're both great options. Moving on to the Balm Essential Sticks. This is Drag A versus the Lilas. So you can see that they're very, they're almost a little hard to see in the camera. You really see it more when you shift or move your hand or face and you see a little like glimpse of the color then. But I wanted to compare this to a couple of the Dior stick glows. This one here, it was Opal Glow 005. So this came out in spring last year, I think. You can see this is gonna be more white but when you move it, you get a little hint of pink and a little hint of purple at times. 
but this is going to be more of a brighter white shade and yeah it's definitely much more stark and then we also have the Dior in Rose Glow 725. This also, I think, was also part of that collection. You can see that this is going to be a cooler pink, and it's slightly more pigmented than the Chanel. Now, I'm not sure if you can really tell on the camera, but the Dior formula versus the Chanel formula, these are going to be more of like a glossy shine Whereas these have a glossy shine, but you can see a little bit of, almost like a little bit of a metallic glint in there. You're not seeing necessarily metallic particles, like you, you can't differentiate particles, but there's just a little bit more of that metallic look to these two. Whereas these look more like, you know, just straight up sheer shiny colors. So there's a little difference there. Personally, for me, I do prefer the Chanel over the Dior. I think it just adds a little bit more dimension. And, you know, it just, the Dior on me can sometimes just look a little greasy. Whereas I think that metallic addition to the Chanel just looks a little bit more intentional. So then this is the other Chanel stick I have. This is En Soleil. And this one... Uh, this came out last year, I think, but I can't remember exactly when. But you can see that this is going to be kind of like this warm golden peach. It's much more pigmented. Got a little orange in there. And yeah, I prefer these two newer shades for my skin tone. <laughs> but overall, I think they're nice. And I think in this deeper shade, you can really see a bit more of that metallic texture in the formula that I was talking about. And I have to say, this does not feel gritty. You don't feel any metallic particles, but it just adds a little bit more dimension to the actual product on the skin. All right, so these are the Rouge Coco Bombs, my closest matches here. So this one here is nine to eight in uh, Pink Delight. And then we have 930 in, this one is gonna be called Sweet Treat. So these are the two limited edition shades. The two closest I have in the permanent range, we have 916 Flirty Coral. And I'm just gonna put that right there. You can see this is gonna be a bit brighter. It is a bit more coral vibe there. Uh, between the two though, I have to say, I do prefer the Pink Delight personally because it is slightly cooler. So, you know, I, I just think it's a bit more neutral. Whereas this Sweet Coral shade, you definitely see a lot more orange in there. I would actually call it more of a soft tangerine, mandarin orange kind of shade versus a coral. And then this one here is 924 Fall for me. Let's go ahead and put this one right here. And you can see this is gonna be a cooler tone version. It's got more berry instead of more of this maroon tone. And these are two lipsticks from Ada Lip Beauty. This is a small indie brand. They actually make everything out of, like there are vegetable pigments and everything. And yeah, I really, I like their products. So they don't have a huge range yet, but I wanted to compare these. So this one here is I Am Brave. And let's go ahead and put that right here. This is gonna be cooler in tone. So this is Sweet Treat, this is I Am Brave. And then this one here is I Am Whole. And let's see here. Let me screw that up a little bit more. I am really not great at swatching on this hand. This is closer. So you can see there's definitely still a difference there. This has maybe a little bit more orange in it, but it is gonna be a warmer version. So I would say this Chanel shade is kind of right in between those two shades. And moving on to the Rouge Allure inks, we've got Gourmandise and Tentacion. This is uh, one of my previous Rouge Allure inks. This one is number 234, Evocation. And this is gonna be, yeah. So you can see, you know, this is gonna be warmer. It's more of a neutral red, whereas this is gonna be cooler in tone, but yeah, another nice shade there. I want to take a look at this Clay de Peau. This is one of the Cream Rouge mattes. This is Strawberry Rhubarb, which is 121. Let's see how this compares. And um, yeah, that's gonna be even more pink. And this is one of the Chanel Rouge Allure Lextrays. This is Rose Supreme. 
I believe that was 822. I hate how you have to pull these out to see the color. And yeah, I think that's an eight, eight or a six. So 822 Rose Supreme. This is gonna be a little bit cooler in tone than Gourmandise. And this is the Gucci liquid lipstick in They Met in Argentina. So let's compare that one as well. Um, this is gonna have a bit more orange, but it, so it's warmer. So that's gonna be it for my comparison swatches. And I have to say, I think this is a really beautiful collection. I'd love to know your thoughts on it, whether you already pick stuff up or whether you're planning to. And I just, I really hope that Chanel in the future considers doing a universal launch for their collections. You know, we are in a world where it's just so easy for, you know, everybody to see everything at the same time. I feel like access should be granted at the same time as well. And I really hope that they consider making a little bit more stock of their limited edition items so that they last longer than like a day or two. So hopefully, you know, in the future, you know, things will start to normalize a bit more. We've got the new creative team starting, or well, they've already started. And, you know, we'll see their work next year. And I'm really excited to see what they come up with. And I'm really hoping that production issues and so forth will be a thing of the past. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And please share your thoughts down below in the comment section. And I will see you very soon. Have a wonderful day. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try to replicate this look that was posted on Instagram. This look was created by Valentina, who is one of the new creative directors and what they're calling the Combat Collective. And their creations will actually launch in 2024. But this is one of the looks that she created for promotion of the new LeBlanc collection. And I love this look. So my eyes are really sore. You can see I've got some texture on them right now. They're really raw. I've done a ton of eye swatches this week. So let's try to disregard that. But let's go ahead and see how I can do. So I'm starting off with this Food A Japan brush in the yellow. Next, I'm taking this Chikahoto brush from the Chocolat collection, and we're gonna go into this brown. And we're just going to kind of line the outer portion of the eyes. My eyes, you know, are a little bit droopier now, so going to angle up a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna use the same brush in the lavender shade. All right, so eyes are done. I added the Talk Mascara in black, and let's go ahead and move on to the cheeks. We're using Fantasy to Chanel. And I'm gonna use the cheek brush from Chikahoto Zen Series. Then we're taking the stick in Lila's and just gonna dab a little bit on my finger and dab it on the cheekbone. So we're gonna get a little bit under the eyebrow arch. And she did the bridge of the nose. Next, we're taking the Byredo brush in 02. This is actually a crease brush and the Rouge Allure ink in Tentacion, which is number 238.
Next, a dab of Lila's on the lips. So this is the final look. Let me know what you think. How'd I do?